I've been having a bit of fun with Forza Horizon 4. That might be putting it mildly. What's up everybody, this is Jay, aka Multimedia Jay, and it's about time I add some constructive commentary here as I walk around this 60 Corvette that I've been trying to figure out how to make work because I got the flames design going on it and everything. One of the problems with this game though is that you cannot change your interior color. Either that or I haven't found it yet. The, the default is uh, white and this pinkish red. So just the whole pink thing. I know this thing's from 1960, but uh, I'm not so sure about the pinkish red. I'd rather have more straight up red like on a Ferrari. Of course, the Ferris Bueller Ferrari is in this game, and that's kind of sort of the convertible that I'm looking for, but it's 8 million credits. So anyways, let's talk about this game. This is Forza Horizon 4. I missed Forza Horizon 3. Largely because of issues with branding with the Forza brand, so to speak, for Microsoft and their games that they uh, put on their Xbox consoles. See, I've known Gran Turismo for years as being the PlayStation driving game, and then Forza was the Xbox one. Oh, the Xbox driving game, not the uh, console. <laughs> yeah, Forza for years to me has been the PlayStation... No, <laughs> not the PlayStation. Forza has been the, uh, the Xbox driving game. And of course, we had Project Cars over on PC, and basically, yeah, every major driving franchise that I know about had a platform it was associated with. But we live in a day and age where Microsoft is doing dual releases on Xbox and PC, and the UWP, what makes the Universal Windows platform universal, is that the same code base is running off of PC and the Xbox One. So if you make something for you know UWP, you're technically making it for both platforms at once. So I'm curious how much Xbox One X type stuff is in this game, and for the people on One X that are playing at 108060, what graphic preset does that correspond to? Because I'm running this on Monolith, check up in the corner for my frame rate and GPU utilization. I'm running this on Monolith at 108060 Ultra with dynamic optimization turned off. I have reason to believe that dynamic optimization has been the source of some issues I've had with stuttering lately where it tried to load new assets to keep the frame rate up and in the middle of a race suddenly things stutter down to 49 frames a second or something. Which I know is far and above the 30 frames a second that the lower end consoles do, but you know I play these games for 60 FPS in the feel of speed. It's something these games have been doing since F-Zero X on the N64. So... Anyways, that's enough uh, intro monologue and uh, panning around this car. I'm just trying to make up for the fact that the interior is basically hot pink. So, either way, uh, this is the part where it kind of, sort of, Forza Vista, this is the part where it kind of, sort of, gets like... Can we close the door? This is the part where it kind of, sort of, gets like the games you can actually go inside your player house. And for my avatar in this game, I've got basically a badass-looking dude with a leather jacket and sunglasses, but there's still the, the blue shirt underneath it. So yeah, I'm actually, since this is a current release, I'm actually watching a few streamers who uh, stream this game. I watched Megan Yaz stream last night. Uh, she tried almost helplessly to get that steering wheel working. That <laughs> it's an issue. Uh, yeah, 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 going off the road already. Well, this is a muscle car, so it, it isn't exactly good at handling turns. For that, if you want something that can actually handle turns, you want to actually get racing tires. Where am I? Well, I should go somewhere where I can actually update this thing, or upgrade it. I think the big issue I ran into with this Corvette is that the upgrades are very, very limited. But anyways, I love the graphics in this game, and the screenshots in particular are pretty interesting. I'm waiting for my dad to be like, where's that? I managed to fool him with a screenshot in ESO. Maybe he didn't have his glasses on or something, but he loves how the how video games look these days in terms of what graphics are available. And now that 1080p is becoming old news to the point where so many systems can do 60 FPS right off the bat, then, uh... Oh, yeah. Off-roading in a Corvette. Of course, this gives away one of the big things I do in this game is that I turn all of my cars into rally cars, specifically because it's an open world game. So I take a traction hit on, on pavement in order to be able to, for example, tear up farmer fields in a Corvette, <laughs> stuff like that. Although I did, you know, I did skip the usual putting like downforce wings on the car and stuff in order to maintain the whole, you know, convertible look, so to speak. So this is a little bit 
gimped on handling, and not just because it's a muscle car, but it's a lesson I learned from Test Drive Unlimited 2, where the Subaru Impreza with four-wheel drive was better if you went off the road than just about every other car in the game, simply because it was on the same drivetrain type as the off-road vehicles. And so you could make it faster than the off-road vehicles in the game and then be fast off-road like this. So even my Lamborghini Aventador, I can do 260 miles an hour, is four-wheel drive dirt, you know, four-wheel drive rally car, basically. Rally suspension and rally tires. I should probably uh, put in a race suspension, though, if I want stiffer springs for going around turns, but... Oh, uh, yeah. This is a fun game to free roam on, but let's put the Corvette away and let's get the subject of a previous upload out, the Myers-Manx 1971. Now, I don't know what this thing was back in its day, but I can tell you that it looks like a four-wheeler. <laughs> Look at this. While we're at it, look at all these cars. This is only from like a couple of weeks of playing the game. And I'm level 184 already. So some people call Forza Horizon 4 the car barfer. Because between the wheel spins and everything, this game practically barfs cars at you. I don't think that's far. That's all that far off. So let's grab the Myers Manx. Now people were making fun of this car in various YouTube videos about this game. And I think I can see why. It, it basically it looks like a golf cart. However, uh, when you hop up the engine in this thing and put some off-road tires on it, you basically get a four-wheeler. A very drifty one at that. Check it out. I knew some people that used to do a lot of drifting uh, when I was growing up, but their four-wheelers could never go as fast as this, and of course, it hurts if you flip a four-wheeler in real life, unlike this game. <laughs> yeah, see, that, that would not have been good. And so that's one of the fun things about video games, being able to do stuff that you wouldn't be able to do in real life. Well, isn't that kind of half the reason we play these things in the first place? <laughs> Escapism, baby! Oh, wait, yeah, this is from when I was experimenting with downforce, trying to make it even and see how floaty everything got. Let's just crank the downforce all the way up and watch this thing wiggle all over the place. I'm playing this game with damage turned off, so that way, you know, just slam into things and whatever. I might turn it back on later. The default is cosmetic only, but you also get simulation damage, where if you slam into too many trees, you wreck your engine, your car won't move. So, and you lose the race because of that. Certainly done enough DNFing, but... So much like in Test Drive Unlimited 2, you have a skill multiplier that builds up, but it goes away like that if you crash too many times. There's a perk that you can take on your cars, because in this game your cars all have talent trees. And there's a perk in the game, on the, in the talent trees for this game, that where you can basically get an extra life, so to speak, so you can slam into one thing and keep your point bonus. So that way, you know, you build up a big bonus, like what I'm doing right now, as I'm rev limiting all over the place. You build up a big bonus, and if you hit something, you just stop, collect your points, and move on. While I'm uh, just zipping around here like this, I should probably mention that one of the ways I'm really having fun with this game on PC is with the crossover between Xbox One and PC, which I really like. Uh, Microsoft's dual releases and bringing Xbox and Windows 10 closer together has been quite a nice move here because I'm able to play this game with an Xbox One controller and a Bluetooth nub. Now, I remember when PC gaming controllers were kind of like niche products. They weren't very high quality compared to what was on the PlayStations of the day and things like that. I remember when controllers weren't all that great on PC. And now, of course, we have the same controllers as the console, so that's all over. Unless you want to have like a Logitech F310 around for backward compatibility with older games that predate X input. But I've just been doing pretty good with Xbox One controllers, got a play in charge power A kit, so I have two nickel cadmium cells that I can use just for the controllers. Save my rechargeable double A's for everything else around the house. Have one controller charging while the other controller's going. And I've also found an app in the Windows Store that shows me the current battery level in the Xbone controllers just by popping open the start menu. So I just hit the window key on the keyboard if I'm like, hey, is this thing getting low yet? And then swap it out if it is. Here's first-person view in the Myers Manx, showing just how 70s it is without round speedometer and everything. 
Whee! Of course, I do have off-road tires on this thing, but as you can imagine, it's pretty drifty. And actually, last night in the stream, as uh, Megan Yao was trying to uh, drift in a Halo Warthog, I mentioned in the chat that the Myers Manx is very, very drifty by default. And indeed it is. This is with the downforce turned all the way up. I've hopped this thing up. I think this is the highest engine that you can do. I think it's the Turbo Rally. Is it? Nah, it's something else, I think. There's more of a whistle to the Turbo Rally engine. It's a bit more Weed Whacker-ish. That's one of the issues with this game, though, is the engine noises. Some of them are getting fixed in patches. Ah, cool! I've done enough drifting to gain a level and influence. Let's spin the wheel and see what prizes we can get. And watch it be close. <laughs> see, this is one of the problems with the game, is that... Oh, cool! Actually... Ooh! Now, notice that I was one thing away from getting a purple pea coat. <laughs> That's one of the issues, because the clothes that you win in the wheel spins are regardless of whether your character is, you know, male or female, so... I actually have quite the women's wardrobe for this guy, simply because of bad luck on wheel spins. And of course we got Forzathon Live, which is the multiplayer outdoor event, which comes up every hour on the hour, so 2 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern Time. Let's actually head over there. Plotting your route to the Forzathon Live event now. And let's just cut through the woods. Here is why I make all my cars into rally cars. <laughs> We're going to do Forzathon live, and then let's call it a video here. I will definitely have lots of commentary on this game, because I first heard about this game when The Crew 2 was having its free weekend, and people were saying, it, The Crew 2 is having its free weekend because Forza, Forza Horizon 4 is coming out, and nobody's going to even think of The Crew 2 after this game comes out. <laughs> Sheep! <laughs> And that's basically what happened. Uh, Crew 2 needs a lot polished up. I like the boats and the planes, but the driving's not very well fleshed out. Whereas this game has basically just cars, or some variant of them. You will be driving, and you will be on four wheels. But the driving you do is very, very, very fleshed out. The upgrade system is very fleshed out as well. It blows away what the Crew 2 has to offer right now. But I think, much like its predecessor, I imagine at some point Ubi and Ivory Tower will get around to patching the crew to to where people will pick it up during a steam sale or something. For now, let's go through the seasons here. So you know, my last video was summer season. This is autumn right now. We got winter coming up next week. The seasons in Forza Horizon change about every week or so. I think it's, what, Thursday at 10.30 or something? Don't know what time zone. So. Ah. An indestructible wall. I hate getting surprised by those things. Let's stop, let's collect our skill points, and then move on. Benefiting from the perk, of course. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Another skill point. But this car is already maxed out, so... Ah, take a shortcut. Even though the... W <laughs> Even though you probably get all wet if you did that in real life. But hey, that's why all my cars are rally cars. Alright, we're almost there. Turn left. Yeah, whatever, GPS. <laughs> I'm taking the more direct route. Good luck. So, let's see what kind of cars people are bringing us. People are like, what the hell is he doing on that thing? <laughs> oh, look! Uh, Renault Rally with, like, some Hello Kitty theme going on. Thanks, Jungle Face Jake. <laughs> what else do people bring here? Oh, people in the pause menu. Let's look at their ghosts. The Hot Wheels Rat Rod. That's a seasonal car thingy. Hey! And a racing truck. One of the design decisions that this game chose to make was to ghost out other players. That way there's no griefing, so you're not like going around like cruising along and some idiot's trying to knock you off the road. It's a little unrealistic, but I can see why Microsoft and, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Playground Games chose to do that. <laughs> Don't assume the publisher is always the game developer, dude. <laughs> so, let me just uh, go to the talent tree for this car again, and let me show you exactly what the deal is with these skill points. So I have tons of extra skill points, because i got to go through all my cars and apply them. And some people complained about the skill points being tied to the car and not to the player. However, there are wheel spins and sometimes cash payouts in these talent trees. So the more cars you get, even if you auction them off later, you can grab the wheel spins and the credits that are hidden in the cars 
as you go along. So if it's something you don't want to drive, then if it's something that you don't want to drive, I got like a minute. Nah, I'm going to do Forza Thought Live. Uh, one car that was very well known for this was the MG MGBT, or that's the green thing way over here. Maybe I should start using the uh, vendor. Ah, there we go. The MG MGBT GT. MG MGB GT. Yeah, that thing. The green thing. <laughs> that thing. Actually, there were people that were selling them, buying them off the auction house, then grabbing the credits, then putting them back on the auction house. So. There's a couple of credit cars in this game. I think that that was fixed in a patch, though. Let's check it out after the Forza-thon. Here comes some more folks with uh, rat rods and stuff. Oh, one supercar. Nice little Bugatti there. Another, of course, reason why I play these games is I used to watch a lot of Top Gear and stuff like that in the Clarkson, Hammond, and May era. So that's another thing I do is I buy, like, land boats from American land boats from the 60s and try and give them good handling. Because of all the times Jeremy Clarkson was like, All American cars are rubbish. They can't handle turns. <laughs> FWD Drift. Ooh, a drift car. Let's see how well the four-wheeler does with that. Starting in five, four, okay. Three, now usually two, what this is, is it's one, a bunch of outdoor events go. like jumps and drifts Round and speed one, zones starting. and stuff. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is a speed zone, which basically means you drive through an area as fast as you can overall, and hopefully you're not driving a land barge that can't take turns. The problem I'm going to have with the Myers Manx is that it's so drifty, even with downforce, that I'm probably going to go off the road more than a few times. Like that. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. Can I cut through the grass? Oh no, there it is. Okay, here we go. Let's try and stay on the asphalt. Fail. <laughs> this car is too drifty. I need the, like, the exact... Uh, this thing is too drifty. I need the exact opposite of this thing. All right, put the hammer down for the last bit because it's actually straight. This is fun for goofing around on grass, tearing through cornfields and the like. Not so much for anything resembling track racing. Of course, I'm probably only going to get, like, low hundreds. Nah, let's use this sky cam type thingy here. And this is with all the downforce and some of the... Actually, I've got the uh, stability management and traction control turned off. So I can do stuff like this! That's a nice sideways burnout. <laughs> hey, you know, the game's got to be fun sometime. Let's see here. Whee! Oh, yeah. I'm playing during the day, of course, so there's a lot of people here that'll help out with getting the uh, progress bar filled up. If you play during the off hours like I do because I work night shift, sometimes you got to change your horizon session in order to get enough players to actually win these things. Shortcut! Right into a tree. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. Oh, right into another tree. Of course, if this were a real family trip, this is the part where uh, the person riding shotgun, not making any assumptions here, would be like, There you go again! Another shortcut that turns into a long cut! <laughs> Alright, you ready? Where is this thing? So the speed trap, unlike the speed zone, is basically a police camera. And you got to go as fast as you can just through that one camera. So this is the part where you can really, you know, you can go off the road afterwards. It doesn't hurt your uh, numbers here. I should be able to get the better part of 200 miles an hour with this thing. Oh, yeah, 180. Now we just pick the point where we want to do a giant e-brake burnout turn. Oh, yeah. Driving in this game may not be like driving in real life. Oh, you think? Look at these stone walls just exploding in front of me. When driving vehicles in real life, always drive them safely. I've played enough of these open world zip around in a car games to have these memorized by now. Going all the way back to the original Test Drive Unlimited, I saw at the time RMake21 had some video he uploaded where he basically was doing dialogue over Test Drive Unlimited, pretending it was a scene from a movie or something. And I might have to do a companion. Woohoo! Beat the train! More not-so-safe driving that you should never do in real life. <laughs> Woo! 
I should do a companion blog entry to this. Oh yeah. I should do a companion uh, blog entry where I show if that video is still out there in like the Armake archive or something, I gotta find that so you can see what I'm talking about. But he was going on about Irate Gamer was becoming a thing and he was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make a movie. And uh, all right. Let's go through the speed trap one more time, just for the heck of it. Although it's not going to be very good if I don't get back on the tar. Okay, heck with the speed trap. <laughs> That's another side effect of this vehicle. It's so light that even though you do slam through stone walls and stuff and small trees, you might get bounced around all over the place. Okay, we're in the rail yard now. And this is the spot where we do stunts. And this is where the Myers Manx, if it stops slamming into things, will do extremely well. Let's begin with a nice big jump off of that danger sign right in the center. Oh yeah, this guy's got the right idea. Thanks, pallets! <laughs> and so does our buddy in the Hot Wheels drag car. Rat Rod, whatever you want to call it. Actually, that Hot Wheels car reminds me of the Sailor Jerry car from Roadkill. Another show that I, that I was a big fan of before they went over to Motor Trend On Demand. Used to be on YouTube. But Motor Trend decided to make their own video service. So. Actually, since I know now there's a ramp on the other side, I should try getting credit for that jump in both directions. Because the danger signs in this game, if you're going through them backwards and you're at the right spot, they will also count as a jump. So, whee! Good. I like to get at least 500 feet... What? 500 feet out of this thing. But uh, Okay, we can't go in that way. Can we? No. Wall. <laughs> There's a wall there. But we should be able to jump here, get like some crappy credit, and then get right back. Oh. There are some danger signs where that works better than others. Let's do one more big jump. We're not doing very well as a team though, so maybe we're spending too much time jumping and not enough time slamming through stuff, doing burnouts, donuts, etc. Although donuts don't count because they're so easy in this game. Wow. 17 feet! <laughs> okay, I'm not settling for that. We're gonna go back and do one more run through that. <laughs> By the way, some of this stuff is kind of sort of what I have in mind for Twitch at some point. Okay, you ready? Put the hammer down, see what this thing can do. My cars are also usually tuned for top speed more so than acceleration, so... Yeah, cleared 600 feet, and let's just do drifting and stuff like that because we're not doing well as a group. We got 10 minutes to finish this. That's a shared time limit, by the way, between all the events. If I had stopped being such a wall magnet. <laughs> Woo! Round three complete. Oh, somebody racked up a ton of points and then cashed in. They must be doing like what I do. All right. Well, let's do one more nice jump off of this conveniently placed hill and get out of here. Woo! Okay, so I did say that I was going to show you folks a credit car before wrapping things up. So let's play dodge the hay bale as we rip through this field. Wee! Oops! Okay, I failed at that. Stop! Cash in the points. Go back to the home, so to speak, although the houses in this game you can't actually enter, unlike Crew 2 and Test Drive Unlimited series. Cool! Another wheel spin! Because of skill chains! And it's a super wheel spin, so we're going to have three things at once, and let me guess, they're going to be all closed, right? Not to be Mr. Negative here, but... Ooh! Maserati, five grand, and yet another BMW. That Maserati looks interesting. Let's go take that for a spin after we check out the MGMGBT Alphabet Soup Car. That's what I should call it. World map, please. Let's go back to the house, a.k.a. the Lake Lodge, which you can get with the VIP pass with this game, which, after I like this game as much as I have, I figured I'm a moron if I don't get that DLC. So, I did. It also increases the credits you win in every race, so it's less of a grind. Not so much pay to win, though. I need 8 million credits to get the Ferris Bueller Ferrari as a great example of that. All right, let's use the quick menu here. MG, MGBT. Now, let's see if that, what the talent tree looks like on this thing. Not going to drive it, because it's basically a sleeper car. Although I might use the 1970 Datsun for that one. Custom upgrade. Uh, no, I want to... 
Um, wait. <laughs> Perks. There we go. I'm used to it being in the other menu. So you see, you got a wheel spin, and then you have credits. So every time you get one of these things, it's in, those annoying rattles are worth investigating. Get an instant bonus of 100,000 credits. No small bonus in this game. Fun stuff. And so the cars that you win randomly will often have those kinds of bonuses in them. As an example, let's check out the Maserati. Don't have a lot of Maseratis yet. Oh, got plenty of Fords, though. <laughs> I have a sleeper uh, 1932 Ford non-hot rod, though. So you pretend it's slow and then gun it and it goes up to 150. Uh, Maserati. M comes after F. Talking about Fords too much. MC12. Let's see what it's got. Right, let's see what it's got under the bonnet. <laughs> Those crazy Americans, they call a liquid gas. <laughs> um, wait a minute. Let's check out the uh, upgrades. That's where it was. I'm used to the, the road menu for it. So we've got two wheel spins to unlock in this thing. See if we can win some more stuff. And this is why, you know, you should not be too concerned about this game being a car barfer. So wheel spin. Oh, okay. It's going to let me actually get both of them. It didn't send me right over to the wheel spin thing automatically? Alright, let's see what we win. Let me guess. Close, right? <laughs> Actually, we have to go outside first. Big grip problem, probably because it's rear-wheel drive, right? Yep, burnout mobile. What the? Oh, anti-lock brakes. Ah, that's half of my problem. I turned off the traction control. Yeah, 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 yeah. What does it look like from the inside? Ooh, ah, cool. Another screamer. Probably has a turbo in it. We'll hop this one up later. That was a warthog horn. Your car horns come from a menu, so... I just wanted to hit the horn because of the two giant horn thingies on the steering wheel. Woo! Sorry about your fence, farmer, whatever. <laughs> just sad, though. You hop up too many cars in this game, and then you get a fast car, and it feels slow. Yeah, good for doing donuts with its rear-wheel drive. <laughs> Does it come with downforce adjustments right off the bat? It's got a wing. Oh, no, they're still locked. It's got to be adjustable. Let's do our wheel spins and call it a day. Oh, please, not another gremlin. I already have one of those. I'm using duplicate cars for drag racing, though. Ooh, five thou. whoop de doo Can get more of that from some races in the game. Waste of a wheel spin. Now, this one will be closed, right? This game... <laughs> 911 GT1 Strassen version 1998 Porsche. This game is owning me. But I'll tell you, most of the time, a lot. Okay, let's just say I usually have really dumb luck. Well, let's take a look at that Porsche then. From uh, Maserati to. Uh, I swear we're gonna wrap this up at some point. Let's check this thing out. It's another race car-ish looking thing that is probably rear-wheel drive, right? Woo! That leaves some rubber on the road. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, we want another wheel spin. <laughs> so much for ending. Oh, it starts out as an S1. Okay. We'll hop it up and see if it goes up to X class. Oh, here you go. See? Close. <laughs> I knew that would happen. <sighs> yeah. Woo! We'll hop this one up at some other point because this has gone on long enough as it is. Take it across a river and into a tree at least once. <laughs> and stop here. This is going to be a fun one. We'll make it into a track toy or something. Kind of like the Selena 7 or something like that. Well, as we look at this nice peaceful river. <laughs> oh yeah, so this is sort of a little on the long side in terms of what I want to record. But I've been having so much fun with this game. That it's basically the only way I can have any regular content at this point. So... Till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.